Okay, so I have a couple of personal questions for you to get to know you a bit better and then we'll go into the international event and talk about your experiences there. Um, so what brought you into Highland Dance? Um, so I started Highland Dancing when I was six years old. I have a little bit of a funny story actually as to why I started. It's nothing exciting like everyone else used to have or has had so far. But um, so I grew up in Kalgoorlie, which is a smaller town to where I am in Perth. It's seven hours east of Perth. So um, it's like a little mining town. Um, but I originally saw Irish dancing on the Wiggles um, and I fell in love with it and I told my mum that that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do Irish dancing just like the Wiggles. So um, my mum obviously tried to find Irish dancing in Kalgoorlie and there was none. So she found a dance school which had, you know, your ballet, tap, jazz, and it had Highland dancing in it. So I went along, I tried all of it, and I actually didn't like any of it but Highland. So um, I stuck with the Highland dancing, loved it, and that's how I really got started. Then when I was about 10, 11 years old, my family moved to Perth and I wanted to keep going with the Highland dancing, um, but I really didn't like competing. So there were a few competitions in Kalgoorlie. I did just very few, I hated being on stage. Um, and when we came to Perth, I joined Scottish Highland Dance Academy, so with Kerry Grosser. She became my teacher. Um, and obviously she had a very successful dance school and they had many more competitions up here or across here than in Kalgoorlie. And um, that's where I guess I started my competitive streak and enjoying the competitions. The very first competition I did here, I came second in everything and I hated it. I wanted the trophy. <laughs> and so then that's kind of where Highland Dancing came from and it just has gone from there. What do you love most about Highland Dance in Australia? Yeah, so Australia uh, has a really lovely Highland Dancing community. Um, I think because Australia is so far apart. So I'm obviously in Perth in the west side, but uh, for us to kind of go interstate, so like South Australia to Adelaide's a three hour flight, over to Sydney's like a four to five hour flight. If you head to Brisbane, you're looking at five to six hours. Um, so it's really allowed me to travel and experience different places, which has been really, really cool. I've been very lucky that my parents could afford and allow me to do the travel. And through that, as I said, there's been so many experiences um, than just competing. So Highland Dancing's become more than just a competition or a show or whatever, it becomes quite an adventure. Um, but I think also because it is so far apart, uh, Australia's really lovely at opening their hands to dancers from other states. So, like, for instance, I remember this one time another younger girl and I travelled over to, I think we went to Sydney, and I would have said that, you know, just plane flights and accommodation and all of that was adding up. So... We were the only two girls from the dance school that went and neither of our parents actually went. So um, we weren't super young, but I would have been just maybe 16, 17, and she was younger than I am. So a family, a dance family that was in with the competition took us in, they picked us up from the airport, we stayed at their house, they took us to the competition, they fed us, they really just allowed us to be part of their family and everyone at the competition, you know, looked after us and it was just really lovely. So I think, yeah, we just have a lovely community um, 
and it's all just always a fun adventure. So growing up as a younger dancer in Australia, who was your biggest inspiration? Okay, so um, I've had a few. I think most people growing up, you do start to look up to quite a few different people. Probably closest to home, a couple of my biggest inspirations were some girls who are in Scottish Island Dance Academy. So as I was, as I said, starting, they were towards the end of their career. Um, and that was Belinda Lush and Rowena Miller. Um, and Belinda Lush was a, well, they both really were very successful Highland dancers. Um, but I definitely looked up to, to them. And I remember the day that I got to go into the older premier class and it was so exciting because, you know, that's where these girls were. And um, it, they just then inspired you every, every lesson uh, to be like them. Rowena particularly, she's had quite a, probably a longer career and she's still very involved. And I think the passion that's within her still is very inspiring to be around. Um, but looking more probably around the country, um, <clears throat> someone like Carl Marston, who um, was taught by Dougie actually, he was again, older than I was so at that more end of his career as I was starting into premiering and getting into the competitions um, and and he just had such power and such strength um, and, and everything looked so easy and I found him very inspiring I actually remember <laughs> this one champion of champions which um, I don't know if you know happens every two years in Australia and it moves around to different places um, and I remember this one year, I think it was my first year in over 16 and, and um, I think I'd just come back. I had just been you know, injured and I wasn't dancing that well anyway, but I was quite scared and nervous to be in Champion of Champions, let alone with this kind of calibre of dancers. And I, I remember... I think we must have been just lining up uh, or marshalling for the reel. And I remember seeing him leap as a warm up as you do. And I kind of just like stood there and I was thinking, what am I doing here? He's amazing. Like what? Like it was just an honor to even be in the same section as him, let alone kind of, I don't think I danced up against like with him on stage or anything, but it was, yeah, he was definitely a big inspiration and a very successful um, Australian Highland dancer. Um, but also kind of um, not a, a dance that I danced with or anything, but even just, I would say, my teacher, Kerry Grosser, I think she's, she's highly inspiring. Um, she's been through lots of ups and downs with me and I think every, every lesson... She has such passion for Highland dancing and, and for each of her dancers. And I find her very inspiring just to be around, just the way she teaches inspires me to, to dance and be better, not just competitively, but a better teacher, a better judge, um, and just be a better person within the Highland dancing community. So, and then obviously all the, all year, like Melbourne Bamford, um, Rebecca Thau, Mario, I think they're all amazing. Um, they're not Australian, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think they're all great inspirations to a lot of young dancers. So moving on to the international event, um, what do you love most about going? Yeah, I love internationals. So um, I, this is going to show my age, but I've been one of the lucky ones that I was actually around at the very first one um, which was would be like 14 15 years ago now um, and, and it's it's really has grown um, it started off as kind of a two-day competition with championship your um had a champions challenge and, and a few other events like your nationals and and jigs and hornpipes although not quite the events they are now um, but it's been really exciting and I love it because it, it, it's grown into like a festival of Highland dancing. So it's, to me, it's like this massive celebration of Highland dancing as a whole. 
Um, and it's obviously got so many events now. So on the Friday night, there's choreography, they've got the championships, they've got champions challenge, they've got nationals, they've got jig and horn part, different um, like challenges with those. There's heaps for the pre-levels as well. Um, and, and then they're like real teams and broadswords. They did this relay fling last year. And, and it's just because it's such a festival of Highland dancing. And I think the committee has such passion behind them that it almost oozes out amongst kind of like the everyone else involved. And it's, it creates this really exciting atmosphere that it, although, you know, lots of people are there to compete, it pulls away from that. And I think it's a lovely, lovely environment to be around that it's not like any other really competition we have in Australia in, in that it's got all of that, not just kind of a championship or whatever. Um, but then they've also got like the Kaylee on the Sunday night. So it's like this weekend... Um, of just pure fun and excitement and and passion and as I said it's like a celebration of Highland dancing which, which I think is um, really cool to be a part of and I, and I really do love it I think it's yeah it, it's a lovely thing to see and see it have grown within us um, over time um, for, for Australian dancers and then also, actually, I should say, what I also love about it is because it has such a variety of events, it's, it's something that the whole, well, not the whole, but a lot of the dance school travels to. So it's one of those really rare times, I guess, or once a year times that the whole dance school and the dance family gets to go together. So although you compete, obviously, individually, it's a really nice team team feel and a family feel. So what is your favorite memory from the internationals? Yeah, I have a few. Um, as I say, I've obviously been to quite a few. So there are a couple of, um, of probably memories or times that have stood out to me though. And I would say, so back kind of in the earlier days, there was no choreography on the Friday night. And it was um, a couple of times that there was actually like a concert. So um, like one of the concerts was called Down Under the Kilt, I think, or Dancing Under the Stars. Sorry, actually I should say it was Dancing Under the Stars. And like another one was say Real Men Do Dance or something like that. Um, you can see I've got a great memory. Um, but it was, they were really, really cool because I was definitely like much younger than I was more like 12, 13. And the concerts involved like the, the adults and, and the really successful Highland dancers of Australia. So like for instance, the Dancing Under the Stars was, um, was like Lisa Barker, had um, Belinda Lush, who I'd mentioned before, there was Dougie McFarlane, there was Carolyn McFarland. Um, and it was, it was just a really inspiring and really cool thing to start the weekend with. So that's a really cool memory. The Real Men Do Dance, they had um, like Tony Cargill and they had um, like Desmond Norfolk and Steve McRae and, and lots of very successful boy Highland dancers. So, so there were some really cool things because it wasn't often you got to go to a concert to sit and watch Highland dancing. So it was really, really cool. That would be a very good memory of mine. I remember sitting in that crowd watching these dancers and just thinking, this is so, so cool. <laughs> um, but another big memory would be that SHDA has done um, a lot of the choreographies, actually a lot of the group choreographies um, on the Friday night. So the Friday always became quite a bit of an adventure because we would, most of us would fly on that Friday morning. So we're up at 3 a.m. to get to the airport, to get our three, four hour flight over to Sydney. So we'll all be on similar flights, if not the same. 
and then we would um, get our hire can and there were a couple of years where we just got like three big minivans. So we're all piling into the minivans, doing our, I don't know, what is it, an hour to two hour trip, depends if you get lost, I guess, up to Gosford. Um, and then you'd all kind of settle into the, to the motel and then you'd, you'd all walk over to the supermarket to get your food for the weekend and we'd be rushing back to get our hair and makeup done to, to prepare for the choreography that night. So um, there were some really lovely memories because you were just, you know, you know what it's like, you're just surrounded by your dance friends and, and it's, it's just so exciting and there's so much adrenaline and, and love coming out and it, yeah, there've been some really good memories. How does it feel to be consistently featured in the top six at such a big event like the Internationals? Yeah, it's been really, really cool. I feel very, very honoured and privileged to be a part of the event. And then obviously in the final um, top six, I think they do a great job of celebrating all of the dances um, actually through the whole weekend, but then particularly in the championship, um, the way that they they announce everyone before you start. And then, and then at the end, you know, where you get up on the podium um, and, and, and the winners dance their fling and, and it's, they really celebrate the winners and, and the top six place getters. And I think it's, it's grown to be one of the, um, championships that that Australian dancers love and and want to make that top six it's probably one of the biggest competitions if not the biggest now on the Australian calendar yearly um, and it's yeah so it's a privilege to be out there with those dancers and, and and to be on in that lineup yeah is there a particular year that stands out for you um I must say, as I said, I have a very bad memory, but I think every year really has been an honour and I, I truly, truly mean that. Um, I think probably the years that I have won have been uh, extra special. I think when you've worked for goals, again, you would know what it's like to, to get that achievement and that satisfaction of, of more just actually of achieving your goal has has been great um, particular year. Do you know what? I actually think every year becomes more and more special. <laughs> As you get older, you kind of don't know whether you're going to be there the next year. So um, I think, yeah, I, I really think that I'm thankful and, and appreciative to be there each year. Yeah. What will you miss most about the international event this year? Um, I think just being part of that celebration in of Highland dancing, as I say, the weekend oozes of passion for Highland dancing. And if you're a passionate Highland dancer, you can't help but feel that. Um, but also seeing the, the, the friends that you make interstate. Um, as I said, we are obviously on the West side and we only have one championship a year um, and maybe about five or six smaller competitions. So we really do have to tra travel to um, kind of get a lot of championships up um, or kind of under our belt so, um, and practice. So um, when you do get to go to a competition, especially like the internationals, it's really great time to actually see your dance friends from around the world, uh, around the country. Um, and so I think I'll miss seeing those, those friends that I've made along the way, but also just that time to share, as I said, with the, with the dance school and the dance family, with the younger um, pre-levels and, and, and even, you know, the girls that are similar to my age, it, it's, it's a great weekend and I think it will be sad to miss that this year. It's just one of those things that really keeps you going, keeps that fire, fire in you. There is more information being posted um, every day on the interactive festival page. And I just wondered, is there any event in particular that you're really looking forward to? 
Um, I think the whole thing's really exciting. Um, I think it's a really cool thing. It'll keep a positive vibe in, in, in Highland Dancing Hay this year. But um, I don't know a whole lot about much, like probably everyone feels, but I am a little bit involved with one particular event. So I'm really excited for that, uh, that event, I guess, um, because probably because I know a little bit too, and I've got to be a part of it. I've got to work with some other, some other people in Australia. Um, so I'm excited for that to come out and, um, and for people to kind of see and become involved. I think it will be a really cool thing to be a part of. I'm trying not to say too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm excited probably for that specific part, which I'm sure will come out soon. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to give it away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at keeping secrets, so I'm really going to be careful. <laughs> a big thank you to Rachel for agreeing to take part. Make sure to follow the interactive event social media pages to join in all the fun activities they have planned. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.